years ago, I got up and I told a story about my experience. Over the years, I got tired of telling that story. But then people would say, well, we hired you to tell that story. And I got locked into this. Sometimes we get locked into our story, our story of our life. I, I don't know where I was and what I was doing, but I heard this or I read it somewhere. It said, when the story you're telling no longer rings true, the words will turn to ashes in your mouth. ADHD Rewired, episode number 39. This is the show designed to help those of us who have really good intentions and a slightly wandering attention. Whether you have ADHD and you want to learn more about it, or you are looking for ways to organize your time, your things, or the many details of life, this show is for you. My name is Eric Tivers. I'm a licensed clinical social worker, coach, and consultant. We know that starting can be the hardest part, so let's get started. But first, Audible. 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 What? You haven't got your free download yet? Come on. Go to audibletrial.com slash ADHD Rewired for your free audiobook download. Audible. 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 Trial.com slash ADHD Rewired. To work. Do you want to get your ADHD rewired? Let me know you are interested in the next ADHD rewired coaching and accountability group. You can let me know at my website. Go to ericktivers.com slash coaching rewired. That's ericktivers.com slash coaching rewired. Hello, Eric Tivers here. And before we get started with this very special episode of ADHD Rewired, I just want to set it up for you a little bit. So it's a special episode because this is the first um, episode that I am sharing from the CHAD conference, the 2014 CHAD conference that was in Chicago. Now, we know that on ADHD Rewired, I really love stories, and I think the stories are what really bring people together for understanding and having those aha moments where we can all connect and relate. And a lot of our stories start from a period of struggle, a period of, of really going through some, some hardships, but then we come out the other side. And not that it's all rosy and, and great, but through our successes, through understanding kind of what's going on uh, with ourselves, we're able to, to really do great things. And the interview that you are about to hear is with someone who has really gone on to do great things, despite having some challenges uh, earlier on in life. The guest that you're about to hear, his name is Jerry Mills, and he describes himself as a concert style uh, keynotist. He gives workshops and he's just a, a brilliant musician, songwriter. And um, what we'll hear in the episode too is that we learned before we uh, hit record um, when we were talking is that we actually grew up basically down the street from each other, which was just a crazy coincidence. So this is not a typical episode because there's a lot of songs in this episode. Um, he uh, performed some live songs for us that are all uh, really stories of, uh, of him and his life and the things that he has experienced. So he is all about... Uh, um, not doubt, not doubting the dream. He even has on his uh, his card that he gave me. Um, it has a sticky note on his card, and on the card it says, "Don't doubt the dream." So with that, let me bring you this really special episode with Jerry Mills. I am here with. Jerry Mills. And Jerry Mills, I, I met him last year at the ADA conference and ran into him again at the 2014 CHAD conference where we are right now. And in our conversations, we found out that we were virtually backyard neighbors, <laughs> which is just a crazy, crazy coincidence. So um, and I'm going to let Jerry kind of explain who he is, um, but this is going to be a real treat. This is going to be something that has not been done um, on ADHD Rewired before, and I'm really excited about this. So, Jerry, welcome. Thank you very much. This is cool. So tell us a little bit about who you are and what is that big, shiny object in your hand? <laughs> it's a guitar. <laughs> um, I am uh, an adult with ADD. I have massive ADD. I've had it my whole life, but I didn't know it till I was in my 30s. I found out when I was teaching elementary school, I had a little kid in my class who was exactly like I was, and I uh, 
didn't know what to do with him. I got a little booklet to read about him, and I read about my whole life. And uh, I wrote a song about it just shortly after that. I've been writing songs for about 35 years. I've written hundreds of songs. But I wrote a song called A Little Peace of Mind. And uh, that's kind of how I, the doors opened into the ADHD world was because of that song. And that's actually a song I wrote five days after I started taking medication. So. Wow, that's, that's incredible. Yeah. So are you going to play us that song? Well, I would, but I think it's better as a poem. Um, hmm. But I have another poem I want to share first. And if you understand ADD, you know how this goes because <laughs> I don't know where my brain's going to go. I want to share a poem with you that you, it used to be a song. And it, this actually was debuted at the first ever National Adult ADD Conference in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The man who organized it, his name was Jim, and he heard this song on my CD, and he called me up, and he said, do you realize you have one of the primary diagnostic tools for adult ADD on that recording? And I said, oh, really, which song? And he turned up his stereo, and he started singing along to this song called Intense. And rather than play any of the song on the guitar, I just want to tell you the lyric to the song. It goes like this. Think. Think for a minute that some people don't. They would if they could, but they can't, so they won't. And it's not like they don't wish, they usually do wish they could think a thought all the way through. But almost as fast as a thought can occur, some fatal distraction is starting to stir until another idea appears in its place, each thought in succession so quickly erased. Picture, if you can, some little jumping beans, and you get an idea of what I really mean. Thoughts jumping around with no rhyme or sense, like the thoughts in my mind jumping round. It's kind of intense. It's kind of intense thinking out of control. And there's times when I think that it's taking its toll as I hang on to one thought to follow it through. But it slips through my mind like so many thoughts do. And as soon as this one thought has found its escape, another idea starts to take shape. But soon that grows restless and loses its sense and leaves me with no other thought than it's kind of intense. Now, in case you aren't listening, then there's nothing to hear. But if you are listening, you've got nothing to fear. And if you're getting the feeling that this all seems so dense, then you know what I mean when I say that it's kind of intense. And my favorite, then there's this crazy harmonica break that, that I awesome. actually pull a muscle on if I try to play it. But this is my favorite verse, the last verse. Now I don't want your pity, because it's really kind of fun to be thinking a new thought before the last one is done. But I do want to leave you with some kind of sense of what it's like to be stuck in a mind that's kind of intense. <laughs> that's fantastic. I think I just found my new diagnostic tool. Yeah. <laughs> Wow. You no, know, he literally said, that, you know, I said, what do you mean diagnostic tool? And he said, the doctors and the psychologists, they can just put it on the sound system in their waiting room and look through their little one-way mirror and all the people with ADD are going to be singing along to the song. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite an image. I'd like to do the music video to that. That's awesome. What would that look like? Ah, uh, it'd be pretty crazy. I don't know. That's the th cool thing about imagination, though. If I, I'd play you a song right now called Imagination, except my guitar's tuned for something else. Um, a tune. I do want to play a song because I play the songs that are freshest on my heart, I guess. And, uh, so the ones that are the, the most recent in your memory? Yeah, and, and not just that, but they're the most emergent, I guess. I've, I'm coming back to chat after a break of a few years, and I love the people here, and I've known some of them for a long, long, long time, and they're dear friends. And coming back here, um, I think people often expect after a few years that you're going to be like you used to be. And I'm not like I used to be at all anymore because of an experience I had last April. I got a call to go do a gig for hundreds of high school kids. They were at grades 6 through 12. And this community had been overrun by math. A lot of parents are in prison. It was just a terrible situation. The kids they said the kids basically were hopeless. So they wanted to know if I would come in and do something. And I remember thinking to myself, I, I'm not going to say no, but I can't do something ordinary. It has to be out of the ordinary and I wrote this song for them it's called Ordinary Me No More I've got a lifetime of experience stored inside my head a kaleidoscopic mixture of the things I've done and seen and heard and read Way deep down inside, I hid myself away 
But I am here to tell you It's not like that today Hi, it's me Hello, it's me I can't be an ordinary me no more I won't be an ordinary me no more Cause I'm not an ordinary me no more I've spent my lifetime thinking Thinking a billion thoughts inside my head A kaleidoscopic mashup of the things I've done and seen and heard and said In my heart and soul is where I chose to hide When it always was as simple as choosing to decide Hi, it's me Hello, it's me I can't be an ordinary me no more I won't be an ordinary me no more Cause I'm not an ordinary me no more Hi, it's me Hello, it's me That was incredible. <laughs> so I had to really use my inhibition because there was I, I was wanting to really just break out and harmonize with oh, that yeah. part. Cool. <laughs> but I was like, well, I'll probably get the wrong note and then I'll screw the, the whole song. <laughs> do it on the next one. Uh, you're gonna have to edit out the tuning. I tune because I care. I spent eight years on the road full time with a twelve string guitar. Oh my god! It was made by Leo Kaki or designed by him. It was a Leo Kaki signature. He he played it in my living room one time. I didn't have <laughs> what? time. I didn't have time to enjoy it. Now because... was this the same living room that was like a couple houses down from me? No, no, oh. no. <laughs> this was in Marquette, Michigan. He was doing a gig in this beautiful auditorium across the street. And talk about ADD, man! That guy is just—he's such a brilliant storyteller, and uh, he was. Does he have ADHD as far as you know? I, I, so I wouldn't speak on his behalf. He's just a brilliant character. And I, I just see a huge correlation between uh, your brilliant creativity. And I mean, I, I thank God for how I am. I just can't tune and talk at the same time. Give me a second here. <laughs> I can so relate to that. I want to play a song that was inspired by something that happened on August 14th of the year 2000. I was in East Jessamon County. Kentucky at their high school, East Jesuit County High School, and I was doing a gig for the teachers. I'd speak to hundreds of thousands of teachers, and it was their back-to-school thing. And afterwards, the high school principal took me on this tour around the building. It was a really cool high school, and he said, I saved this last thing for last. I know you got to get going, but I want you to go in there and look on the wall. And I walked into the special ed resource room, and on the wall was this painting that this kid had painted. And he was telling me how this kid's story reminded me so much of my story, the story I shared. And I walked in, and there was this painting. I'll give it to you to put on your site if you want. It was a painting of Albert Einstein that was painted with black and white paint by this kid named Lee Busick. And next to it said, uh, it was a quote by Einstein, and it said, Imagination is more important than knowledge. Knowledge is limited. Imagination encircles the world. And <laughs> that, that quote changed my life. And it led to this song, which is called Imagination. Imagining a song about a man who is imagining a song. Imagining a man who is imagining song about a man Imagining a world who is imagining a song about a world 
imagining a way to be imagining a song about a way. Imagination Come and be The light in our creation Imagination Come and be The fuel in our fire Imagination The power to be The best that we can be Imagination Where we all Create our new reality Imagining an answer To a question You don't know the answer to Imagining doing Exactly what it is You mean to do Imagining being exactly who it is you mean to be. Imagining life full of brand new possibilities. Imagination come and be the light in our creation. Imagination Come and be The fuel in our fire Imagination The power to be The best that we can be Imagination Where we all create our new reality Imagining a song about a man who is imagining a song. That's that's fantastic! <laughs> wow, I, I can see where the the Leo Kaki uh, influences are there. Well, man. I don't know, man. I, I just I'm really really fortunate to be who I am and get to do what I do. I you know just a little backstory. I. Uh, like a lot of people, I struggled through an awful lot of adversity when I was a kid. It's a story I actually talk about in my live programs. And I was hurt real bad in an accident when I was a kid and had to have surgery and rehabilitation on my hands, my right hand. And my surgeon told me when I had kind of given up on life, he told me that uh, it was basically going to be my choice what I did with my life. And that he, his last little bit of advice is to find some hobby where I use my hand for hours a day. So I took up playing the guitar as therapy for my hand, and now all these years later, it's turned into this just really, really, really um, fortunate existence. Go to audibletrial.com slash ADHD rewired for your free audiobook download. Eric Tibbers here with ADHD Rewired, and I was wondering if you've started thinking about your goals for 2015 yet. I know I have, and I've got a couple big ones that I'm really excited about, but I also know that it takes a lot more than just being excited about an idea to actually make it happen. The first ADHD Rewired online coaching group, it's now coming to a close. This is actually the last week. And to the members of this group, I want to thank each and every one of you for your commitment and dedication, both to your own personal goals and to the group. You have all shown incredible perseverance, and I could not be prouder. You have packed your house and got it on the market. You've organized your office and have managed to maintain that. You've improved your sleep. You've learned how to set goals and track them. You're spending more time with your daughter. 
You've learned how to take case notes that once took you 45 minutes and you're now getting them done in five minutes. That's awesome. You've learned to change your mindset by expressing gratitude daily. You've learned how to create morning and evening routines. You've learned to plan and break things down and get things done. It really has been an intense three months. And the fact that this group is now coming to a close, it's kind of bittersweet. I am sad that it's ending, but I can't wait to get the next group going because I know it will change lives. If you're ready to supercharge your productivity, feel less overwhelmed and more in charge of your life and your goals, let me know you're interested in our next coaching group session. It will be here before you know it. Go to erictivers.com slash coaching rewired. That's erictivers.com slash coaching rewired to let me know you're serious about getting your ADHD rewired. This group will start in January of 2015. And just like the last one, this will sell out. Go to erictivers.com slash coaching rewired to let me know you're ready to get your ADHD rewired. So you're you're making your living doing this. Yeah, I've been doing it for um, 20 years. I Wow. I got up one day in front of 400 of my fellow teachers and did a back to school keynote for them and um within a year I was going to Australia and part a big part of it was um my the exposure I received when I spoke at Chad the first time in 1994, 20 years ago. Wow. I was at the Chad conference in a room of about 75 people and I had to repeat my session like three times because it was it just had such an emotional impact on people and so it it it, it really is um I, I just feel so fortunate to be living in a world of such amazing people there's just so many cool people in this the so, world of ADD. So I have like a thousand questions that I want to you know I was trying to pick that one that you had a that one of your lines and um I think it was the the imagination song about having the billion thoughts you know going through your mind. Um now I'm trying to capture the one, and when you try to slow it down, then they all go away, which is what's happening right now. <laughs> Interesting. Um, you know, an analogy, and I, I want to pay tribute to a girl. I, I met so many people on the road, and there was a girl who, who she's not living anymore. She died years ago, but she used to live in Columbus, Indiana, and she had significant ADD. And she told me that um, trying to grab a thought out of her head was like trying to open up a dryer full of socks that was tumbling around, and to reach in and grab the precise sock of the thought that she had. She said it was really um, an impossible thing to do. And oh whenever somebody gosh. goes for a thought, I just imagine all these socks. <laughs> <laughs> and for me, and, and when I go to conferences and stuff like this, I, I have issues of going to sleep. You know, my, my brain just keeps going. And at conferences, it's like an overdrive, which makes all that thought capturing kind of stuff um, even more interesting. Um, so I, I, what, I was, what I was going to say is that just well, congratulations on your success uh, w- with this. When um, So I'm also a, a musician. Um, before I went back to grad, at school, I uh, I auditioned with a uh, a band, and um, they offered me a, a gig to to tour with them, and I I turned it down because I realized that if if I had some success doing it, I would probably never go back to school, because um, what I, I I almost dropped out of college because I wanted to just play music, um, so. You know, I look at that as a sort of a good thing. So I did go back to school. I, I use music in, in some of my clinical practice at, uh, with my clients. And every once in a while, that thought just crosses my mind of what if I just played music? Because, you know, when I hear music just moves me and it's it's like every, there's something about music and there's something about just the, that that the emotional resonance of of music and I, I love folk music and and um, so when I was just listening to you play, I, the thought of going through my mind was I should just close up shop and go on tour. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> really? I, I had uh, that same when I um, years ago I saw the uh, the movie August Rush. Have you ever seen that movie? No, I haven't. Oh, it's an incredible movie. I think somebody's told me about it though. And uh, so after this movie, I, I was like in this like state of like, I, I, I just have to go play music. Like I, I shouldn't be a, a therapist anymore. I just, you know, it took three days to pass. And then I was on to, but you know, it's, it's finding that, that time for that passion. And um, I just think it's fantastic. And um, one of my questions for you is, cause I, we focus a lot on um, kind of productivity strategies. How do you manage the business part of doing this professionally? I, I don't do it well. 
<laughs> you write songs about it. Yeah. Oh, billing, I don't want to do you. It makes it makes for uh, no. What it is is I I I have I've learned over the years. Initially, when I got started in this, I. It took so much effort. It's like when I went to college. I got on this mission to become a criminal defense attorney because I had lots of experience with the law when I was a kid. And so I, w- I went back. Wh- which, to, which side of the law? Uh, running from. <laughs> I, I'll tell you about crimes that were committed <laughs> within sight of your house. <laughs> but I'm not going to tell it on the podcast. And I got busted for all of them because I was naive and I was dumb and I was hyperactive and what have you. But um, all these years later. That now I've lost, I had a blink now. I've completely flushed the thought that I was just thinking. <laughs> but that's okay. I'm sure people understand that. No, just the, the thought that there's some things in life that you can't not do. And music has always been that for me. I, I, you know, when I was teaching in the classroom, I, even when I was substitute teaching in a calculus class, I still walked in with my guitar, and they're all looking at me like I'm some sort of freak. But I would find some <laughs> Look way at to this bring, teacher. <laughs> well, just to bring music in, into the experience, because I think um, it's, it's what I've been given. Everybody has something to contribute. What I've been given to contribute are the songs and the, and the experience of the songs. There was a, a book by, uh, I think it was Oliver Sacks, uh, about music and the brain. And one of the, the fascinating things that, that I uh, grabbed from that um, was that, you know, there's no music part of the brain. Our entire brain is wired for music, wow. which is so cool wow. when you think about it. And when you think about all the, the therapeutic uh, aspects of music, where you can get um, individuals with language disorders, say like nonverbal uh, individuals with autism, they can communicate through song. People who have movement disorders, get a beat going and they can actually move to that beat it's something so powerful so kind of innate that's that's within us and when i when i hear that schools are cutting you know uh, music programs it, it's, it's yeah, really it's first to go yeah. really yeah. it's like i thought you're trying to help your math and science scores no, not hurt them <laughs> i'm trying to hold these two neurons connected in in space right now inside my brain because i just i just remember to get back to the question that you asked before about managing how to manage how you know how oh, to manage the productivity that. about your business um I, I'm a perfectionist. A lot of us are. And, you know, I spend so many hours in my life trying to perfect the performance of my database. Not really what's in the database or who I ought to be calling. <laughs> just the, but I got to make this field. No, no, no. <laughs> just how to make the fields work better and flow better and lay out better. Just all this stuff. And I finally realized that what we got to do is uh, find a way to empower the people who are good at doing that. Yes. That sort of thing. Yes. Yes. So, like recently, I, I met up with a woman who's a real creative whiz and hired a firm and they're putting together an entirely new way of looking at what I do uh, because my website I basically have done myself forever and uh, it's a nice looking website but it really doesn't do anything <laughs> so I, uh, I'm re- really excited to have you know to kind of turn the things that I'm not good over to other people and, and, and I and I've been doing that more and more too because it's uh, you know you got to work in your green zone I think that and that's what I refer to our strengths the things when you know I go to work and ninety percent of what I do I consider play that's my green zone like what, when I'm working with clients that's fun for me I'm doing I do a lot of stuff online that's fun for me when I have to do administrative stuff that is not fun for me and I, I'll put it off then I'll get an anxiety about it and, and I've been been uh, delegating more and more stuff and it's awesome because that's allowing me to actually do more of this kind of stuff um, which I'm good at which is going to to really provide more value uh, for other people me trying to stuff envelopes and sending out bills that's not providing value for anyone and I've, I'm miserable doing it it's true it's like torture to me yeah. and it's and it, it's you know I'm not even over exaggerating it's a truly distressing um, uh, feeling and so it's like I think that people, and I've said this before on my podcast, that people without ADHD who are able to have a job they love, that's, that's great and that's wonderful. But there are lots of people who can, who can just have a job that pays the bills and they're okay with that. People with ADHD will flounder and will fail when they have a job they don't like and they're not doing the things that they're good at. When, they have, when they're doing that thing that they're good at, they're going to be amazing. And it's, that's the, it's so important to understand the value of, of strengths and, and um, really learn how to craft those strengths and get even better at them. Yeah. And, you know, in, in the same regard, I was, you know, this has probably happened with other people. When you have a passion, when what you do is your passion and, and you become successful at it, because I did, I, I, you know, by whatever standards you want to use, I got to be really successful and I was traveling. I knew it was a problem when my little kid, Andrew, said to me one time, Daddy, you know, not everybody's daddy works all the time. You work all the time. And I said, but I love what I do. And then I realized, whoa, 
But three years ago, something happened to me that just changed everything for me. And it was that I years ago I got up and I told a story about my experience. And I did it in a, a real creative way, and it had this profound impact on people. Well, then over the years, I got tired of telling that story. I didn't want to tell that story anymore. I wanted to tell new stories and new songs because there's all this new stuff. But then people would say, well, we hired you to tell that story. And I got locked into this, our story. And sometimes we get locked into our mm -hmm. story, our story of our life. And uh, I, I don't know where I was and what I was doing, but I heard this or I read it somewhere. It said, when the story you're telling no longer rings true, the words will turn to ashes in your mouth. And when I heard that, I almost started gagging because I just thought, I can't do this anymore. I'm not going to. So literally for the past three years, I have let my business just kind of slide down and, and level off so I could sit in the basement or out at the lake or at this place. My favorite songwriting place is called Presque Isle. And I have literally over the last three years spent, I'd say, at least 5,000 hours doing that, you know, practicing the the uh, the principle. What's the? It's from... Um, Malcolm Gladwell, who talks about the 10,000-hour principle. If you want to truly be an expert at something, mm -hmm. do it for 10,000 hours, and you will be. And uh, I think it's it's paid off big fruits because I'm certainly not making the income I used to, but I don't think I've ever been so happy in doing what I do. Using the gift, I think. An, an example, you know, just because I got the guitar tuned up for this, and it's kind of a good song to... I, I want to play this for you personally because you were talking about maybe someday I could do that or would do that. Um, there's a guy I know who was a pilot, and he was a real quirky guy, um, a wonderful teacher of biology and, and high school stuff, and, and he used to take people up flying in his plane. And I found out that he had real bad, he was sick real bad, and that he might not make it. It was one of those pancreatic, and it was a bad thing. And I found out that he had passed, and I was riding on a bus across Iowa, and I uh, was trying to get to the Minneapolis airport. There were weather issues. And as I was riding in this bus, I wrote this tune, it's called Fly, and I actually wrote it for his funeral, but I changed the word sense because I realized that the message is, is much more universal than um, paying your respects to somebody. So this song called Can. All those thoughts about what you wanted, all those words that are living in your head, all those things you did to figure out What's down the road ahead All this time you've known You've known a secret Kept in your quirky mind All the while you've lived In awe and wonder This is the place Now is your time Now is your time, this is the place Here and now, amazing grace There's no easy way to touch the sky But I know you can fly You can fly Love and learn Learn and grow Grow to be Who you know You know who You know when You know you Can Fly You can fly Now is your time This is the place here and now, amazing grace There's no easy way to touch the sky But I know you can Fly You can fly Love and learn Learn and grow Grow to be Who you know You know who You know when You know you Can You know who You know when You know you Can
Jerry Mills. I can listen to you all day. <laughs> I, I was like, man, well, I wish I had my guitar. And, yeah. <laughs> well, let's do that sometime when I'm down in the neighborhood. I'll come find you. All right. I love getting down this way. Awesome. Well, we are, uh, we are at the 30-minute mark. I, I had actually no concept of how long we've been in here for. I, I <laughs> usually, I have timers in front of me, and I'm, we're sitting here kind of – I'm holding these microphones, and I'm just like – I love doing this because it's an intimate setting, and I'm literally six inches from you while doing this entire time. <laughs> in you know, this you, little closet. Yeah. Yes, and, and usually when I'm doing these interviews, it's you know I'm doing this virtually over Skype, and you know this is just so cool. This oh, is cool. so cool. Uh, and so now I'm thinking, hmm, should I start another podcast all about like musicians who s- sing songs that are inspirational, life changing? You know those those kinds of those kinds of things that you know I really make a difference. Are you going to be at the tribute tonight? I'm not sure, actually. Oh, well, you can edit that part out too if you want. <laughs> yes, I, I, I front row seats. Of no, there's cor- a of course. There's a I reveal. Am... There's a reveal uh, tonight of something that we've been working on, and um, you'll see it after the conference. But it's a, a song. I did a song. On, it was, I, I'll tell the story tonight. But on May 10th of 2010, May, May 21st of 2010, at a quarter to three in the morning, I was in the basement and I had written this. Uh, this uh can i play another song sure we have time for one more do you uh, I, I actually have no idea if we do or not but i'm just like <laughs> yes uh, this is see. fun <laughs> not thinking about the potential consequences of i've continuing education units i gotta go get to sit in these classes uh-huh. all right I can download the recordings of those and get those CDs later on. Here's what, here's, here's what I'm telling you. I'll, I'll tell you the story, and then you can cut the song. Because I'll just give you the song, the production of the song. Um, but i got to tune and talk. <laughs> we saw how that went last time. <laughs> so years ago, I was in a situation with a woman who I was married to at the time. I'm not to, not anymore. And But I was real angry about something. And... Uh, so I, I wrote her song. The best songs, being angry or being sad yeah. or depressed. I wrote her this song, and it was like, you know, it had this, it had this, it was like, a, and it was like real, real intense energy. And she didn't know that I was flying through O'Hare at the same time as she was. So I, I met her at her gate, and she saw me with my guitar, and I motioned for her to follow me, and we went and we sat on this bench, and. Uh, um, this is way too much information because th- this is like I'm disrespecting her, but I'm not disrespecting her at all, okay? So we went and we sat on this bench and I played her the song. And I put the song away and I never played it again for 12 years. And I was in the basement, I was playing this. This. And I thought, wow, what a waste. Of, it's such a good groove. Why waste that on a bad song? So I said, why don't you just think about, like, what's the opposite of that song? It's like, and I was thinking about all the people I've met over the years in organizations like Chad and all the different service organizations and people, just people who give. They volunteer. They make a difference. They care. They want to. They have empathy. You know, the, it's right there on the wall. And, uh, and I was thinking about those people, and I wrote this song. And I'm not kidding you. When I wrote this song, I saw millions of people, and they were all singing this in their in their own language simultaneously. And it was kind of freaky. So that was May 21st. On July 8th, I played it in front of 2,000 people in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Seated in the front row was the incoming president of the world's largest service organization, Rotary International. He heard the song. They got behind it. I went to Nashville, one of the major studios in Nashville. It's a 100-year-old church called Ocean Way, Nashville. And with a gospel choir and a full orchestra, produced this song, and it was released all over the world in this in a bunch of languages. But I always knew that the song is so much bigger than a service organization because it's about anybody who really. So what I ended up writing is this it goes like this, and it's a lyric that a lot of your listeners probably could have written. The words are: When I see a need, I like to lend a hand. We all need someone to understand that there are people in this world who really need us now. It's up to each of us to figure out how. We are calling out around the world, come join us. There is work for you and me. We are building communities and bridging continents all around the world. And so this is how the song went. When I see a need I like to lend a hand 
We all need someone to understand that there are people in this world who really need us now. It's up to each of us to figure out how. We are calling out around the world, come join us. There is work for you and me. We are building communities and bridging continents all around, all around the world. When I hear the call, service above itself. It's not just a slogan on my office shelf. It's the way I choose to live. The hand I have to give. Thankful for the chance give of myself We are calling out around the world Come join us There is work for you and me We are building communities and bridging continents all around all around the world We are calling out around the world. Come join us. So that's how that's how the song was originally. And if you have a chance, I'll I'll give you the file from the song that I'm going to do tonight, which is the full production. And you can let people hear what the full production. It's just gorgeous. So. Well, Jerry Mills, I think this was this was such a treat. Well, Let's well, do it why again. would I want to be in a session where I could be sitting here with you doing this? This was fantastic. Well. Thank you so much. Sure. And uh, let everyone know, please, where where can they find you if they want to hear more of your music, if they want to hire you, because I, I think that more people should hear what you're doing. Um, I, they can contact me through my website. It's just jerrymills.com. I be just want to just so you know, he, he just pulled out his card so he can look at his <laughs> own URL for his website. <laughs> my, my talking points. <laughs> no, I just actually, my name is, wait, let me pull this no, out. It's, <laughs> it's, funny, it's funny because anybody who knows me, people, there's people who have seen me 10, 15 times, and anybody who knows me knows the story about the post-it note and don't doubt the dream. That's really the theme of everything I do is don't doubt the dream. So I hired this company and I spent all this money trying to figure out what my brand is, right? And we came up with all these different things and slogans and finally I realized so my brand is just the post-it note which is Don't Doubt the Dream and I, they can find me through the web I'm on Facebook I'm, you can certainly find me in front of me there but um, on YouTube there's a channel called Boom Zinger and um, that's, my, what's, that's where I'm posting performance videos and then I also just started a new YouTube channel it's called uh, When the Circus Comes to Town awesome. and, and it, I, it's Basically, I get to see so many cool things, and I shoot them on my uh, iPhone, and they're just they're just weird things. They have nothing to do with anything that I do. They're just interesting videos of a lot of music performances. I get to see a lot of cool musicians, and that that's posted on that channel. So, boom zinger for the performance stuff, YouTube, and all of my music's on iTunes. And you know, as as my community knows, they don't have to remember any of these links because they will all be within the show notes. You can open up the app that you're listening to this right now, and you're going to find links to all the things that Jared just mentioned. Seriously? And they're, and they're, yep, and they're wow, also dude. on. <laughs> yeah, and they're also on my website. Um, I don't know which episode this will be since I'm, I'm batching a bunch of uh, episodes here while I am uh, while we're at the conference. But this has truly been an extraordinary treat. Thank cool. you so much. Awesome. Thank you. All right, and we'll see you next time. Well, ADHD Rewired Community, as always, I want to thank you for listening and for leaving those five-star ratings and reviews. Your ratings and reviews on iTunes and Stitcher help other people find this podcast. 
It is a big way that you can do a small thing that can make a big difference in the lives of others with ADHD. So thank you. Are you looking for a coach who is also an accountability partner? Pick me, pick me. Schedule a free 20-minute consultation with me. It's super easy. Go to erictivers.com and click the blue request an appointment bar. We are on Facebook. Like our page and submit your request to join our free community. It's the ADHD Rewired Online Community. That's at Facebook. If you live in the Northern Illinois area, you are invited to the Northern Illinois Chapter of Chad. We meet on the third Monday of the month in Gray's Lake. We are also on Facebook and meetup.com or just check the show notes for a link. If you're not in Northern Illinois, go to chad.org and find a group in your area. I want to give you a quick update on my sleep goals. So this has not been a banner week for my sleep. Today is Friday, November 21st, and today's the first day all week that I haven't really felt in a complete fog. So the Chad conference took a lot out of me, and I learned from that that I need to give myself one more day to recover. Having a my sleep cut short for several days in a row does have a big impact on me that affects me more than just the next day. So lessons learned, and I will do my best to be more intentional so I do different next time. So for this week, if I will actually make my goals if I get home tonight uh, to put my son to bed and spend some time with my wife. So I did it last night, and I'm hoping to do it tonight as well. I'll update you next week. Don't forget, if you would like to be a part of the next ADHD Rewired Coaching and Accountability Group, you can let me know by going to erictivers.com slash coaching rewired. That's erictivers.com slash coaching rewired. The enrollment has not started yet, but I am taking a list of people who are interested because you will be the first to know. That's all I have for this week. Until next time.